Hello Polygoners, I am Shaft, you're watching Polygon Gaming, this is game number two, it's a Zerg vs Terran, but game number two of my placement matches, as you guys know, I got a new account, we're going to see where the Battle.net ladder thinks I should be, this is a Zerg vs Terran, this guy's a little bit weird, um, uh, there's a lot of themes in this game that I think are worth exploring, primarily though, I want to talk about utilizing your units in a way that makes sense so area of effect is what keeps Terran really safe especially in an economic Terran on like three bases you need widow mines or tanks or sometimes liberators are a little more tricky but you need something that allows you to control a zone and a zone that you can retreat to because Marines are glass cannons they can kill off an enemy really quickly, they can run away really quickly, but if they don't have anything to run to, eventually they just hit a wall. And this game is kind of an iffy one, because like, I'm doing a style that I no longer play. Um, Mutalus used to be good, everyone knows Muto, Ling Bane, that used to be what ZBT was all about. Uh, Thor's way too good right now. Mutalists just don't cut it. I am still gonna go for like a spire build this game, but even with all of that aside, I'm going to lose like my third base just due to some stupid stuff. But my opponent makes a really big mistake in the fact that he's attacking with like Marines, Hellions, and Vikings, and he's able to kill off my third because I'm being super greedy. But then he turns around and he's super greedy as well. Whenever you're taking a base, you have to think about the fact, can you defend it? And if you can maybe defend it, then that's fine, but you should probably be on your side of the map doing so. And it's just, you you got to make smart choices and make sure all your choices are congruent. Um, as you can see, I'm just getting this basic build set up. Now, every Zerg vs. Terran really comes down to... Uh, are you going to keep your workers on gas or off of ga gas? Typically, players will pull off after metabolic boost, but in Korea, you've seen a lot of players uh, staying on pneumatized carapace a lot longer, so that's what I'm going for now, is just going for that pneumatized carapace. And I like to pull off two lanes to go harass my opponent's natural while I'm defending this Reaper shenaniganry. And yeah, we do get the save there. Great. Trying to zone with the lanes. The lanes not quite in position, though. And we're just going to try and knock him back with a queen does go back make sure I get the injects off and um, yeah game's starting to settle on down now and I am pulling off after the pneumatized carapace I overmine just a little bit dealing with that reaper yeah not that big a deal however this does affect my third base timing quite a bit I could actually go ahead and take the third base now but I'm a bit behind on that I need to work on that that's definitely something I've noticed I could improve little shenanigans here at the natural and basically I want to use as many overlords as I have to to know exactly what he's doing it does hurt my economy to go for overlord speed and you know I am messing it up even more with this third but even though it hurts the economy I can be much more cost effective with what units I build and how I spend my larva if I know exactly what he's going. And guess what? Now I do know exactly what he's going. He's got three barracks, one factory, one starboard, at the very bare minimum. Typically, this would point to a drop heavy style. So that's what I'm going to be start reacting to. Now, this guy will instead go for Vikings to kill off overlords and then just do some weird ground push to my third. So his actions aren't completely congruent and that that's weird notice here that i'm actually like using this little green shadow print to space everything out i do this all the time to make sure that my buildings are exactly the way i want and i always work on the hardest part notice that far left little corner crevice thing and then build towards the easier part which is of course the hatchery um just one of the little things i do to save time i don't know maybe it'll help you maybe not if not you know that's cool if so let me know in the comments below and no matter how hard you try, this overlord is definitely going to die. They cannot outrun a viking, even with overlord speed. And going ahead and getting some extra gas. Because at this point, like I said, I'm still doing muta builds. I no longer really recommend those. Um, but, you know, 
100-100 that requires two base saturation for gas or if you want some leftover mineral income you can throw some on your third base mining that um, I'm not really seeing this game going super super long but I'll build some extra workers just in case here shortly trying to hide the spire just a little bit but uh, again Thor's just too good right now I didn't know that at this point though this is like kind of my first introduction to the meta recently and it looks like I'm going 1-1 one, one, like with a carapace and everything. I don't actually go for carapace. When doing a hydralisk style, I think the raw DPS is much, much better. Anything you can kill off in the initial engagement with a Terran, like in the first few seconds, is way better than trying to engage a Terran over like an extended amount of time. The longer the battle goes on, the better it favors the Terran. In almost all cases. Gonna pull the spine crawler right on forward. Silly silly goose, it will help defend my uh, my natural though. What I'm going to do here is split off these lings. I want a bunch of lings going straight into his natural. And in order to like either pull him home, delay his reinforcements, or take out a huge amount of workers. Meanwhile, killing off as much as I can in the instant volley, that's going to be the reason for the banelings. And it looks like as this hatchery falls, the uh, broodlings killing off a... Hellion maybe gets another Hellion or at least a couple of Marines there. There's just not enough medevacs here for him really. Um, repair would definitely help out, but honestly, some Widow Mines, some tanks, some kind of area of effect damage is really what he needs. The Hellion's just not enough to cut it. And what I want to do here is basically abuse the fact that he no longer has or well he's never had really a point to retreat to that's the beauty of widow mines that's the beauty of tanks and like i said even sometimes liberators is you're 100 controlling the zone that those units control even if you just got one of them maybe would require a second one here i don't know it's hard to be sure but even just one of them would help a ton. There's just not going to be that. And there's nothing to retreat to. There isn't one of those points to retreat to. And he's just going to get backed into a wall. Boom. Notice he's trying to kite. He's got nowhere to retreat to. And then the Hellions no longer have a place to retreat to. The Roaches are blocking that off. And boom. The Hellions are getting roasted. Now, I've killed off a lot of his army. But I don't have very much army here left myself. I'm going to be reliant a lot on the reinforcements. Those eggs that are currently about to hatch. And I've got these two and some more roaches coming in. But he's still got this whole base over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull out of his natural. His units are fighting me. If they come out a little bit more, that's great. They're actually staying back. They want to build up another wall. Okay, let's bring in some of my roach reinforcements. Knock that wall down. We can kill off these Vikings. Do a little bit of stutter stopping. Kill off the Marines. No problem. Is he dancing? Was, was that a dancing Viking or just a dying Viking? I'm not sure. But basically, this is exploiting the fact that he had no point to retreat to as well as no aoe and those are actually the same problem and that's gonna allow me right into his main because again there's just nothing for his units to retreat to nothing that can deal with this one tank is all it would have taken but he instead chose to be aggressive to take out my third base to take a super greedy third of his own and not to get drops or do anything else he had nowhere to run to GG. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.